King County has also provided um, job descriptions and uh, also ranges or scale ranges for interns that would be also available for assistance in those areas as well as far as helping us with the data entry and, and just getting the paperwork and everything caught up. Um, an uh, interlocal agreement with King County with finance assistance, getting the budget needs and numbers for each department, get financials caught up, get the mid-year, mid not mid-year, <laughs> mid-year budget done and, you know, and get caught up on any reporting that is behind. We have not turned in our year in that was due on May 31st. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that we would be looking at getting those things taken care of. Um, interlocal agreement with the City of Auburn with Public Works Assistance. They have projects that are similar to ours or we're partnered with on those projects, so they would be very helpful and moving forward in those items as well. Um, IT assistance with Auburn, email access, you know, and, and monitoring backing up the, of our system on a daily basis to ensure that that does happen. Um, public safety is a priority, so police departments remain as it is. Can we afford to fill vacancies? Because one of our huge concerns as a council right now is where are we financially? We do not know. Um, hiring or develop a hiring team to fill department head vacancies, and then also city hall, city campus buildings, do we need to um, change blocks, those type of things. So those are the items that were discussed, we had talked about, and um, I would like to open that discussion up now to the council for any suggestions, ideas, how do we move forward. Part of the one of the handouts that I gave you is the Auburn resolution that Auburn is discussing tonight regarding um, um, interlocal agreements, the draft interlocal agreement. I hope you have an opportunity to go through and see if there's things that you want taken out, added. Basically, what he tried to do is make it real broad and blanket a lot of areas so we can kind of pick and choose what we need from them and just um, as we need it. He wanted to go to his council with a resolution to provide assistance for the city. <coughs> and so and this was just given to me today, so I, I didn't get a chance to really dissect it or go through it. Another item that I handed out to council is um, the resume of a gentleman that I spoke with on Friday and he is a retired city manager and his resume it shows you the different cities that he is a city administrative city manager. And um, what, what he is is a Range Rover, I can't remember the exact term that they call, but he is willing to come and sit down with us and talk about some of the things that we should do to try to get us through this interim period with things that he can help with, what resources he could offer, and that is all for free. Um, it's basically just um, there's the city county management association. Uh, I'm going to meet with him tomorrow at five, and um, since it looks like two of the committee members are unable to make it, if any of the council members would like to sit in on that meeting, I'm okay with that. We're going to be right here in city council. Yeah. Yes. At three thirty. Yeah. Huh? Uh, I was not told that until five. I'm out of their box with her. So, anyway, so, um, anyway, that meeting is here at 5. <coughs> so, with that, I'll open up the floor to council members for discussion. Any thoughts, concerns, comments? Basically, just wanted to give you a report of what we were discussing, some of the things that we were looking at. And um, now that we know, transition is here. So I have some questions here. Uh, part of it will probably start with Ken. Uh, there was some discussion on changing locks on uh, well sites and some other places. Uh, has anything been done as far as any? Things? We have a plan. So we changed the locks just as a precautionary measure anyway on the uh, well house or the well uh, fences, just the gate box, just the padlock on the well, the booster station, and the public works yard. Uh, and that's so far that's all we've changed. I was waiting, I'm getting trapped. I'm going to got called up to get bids for changing the locks, city hall and all the all the locks if necessary. Um, and yeah, worst case scenario, I think we should at least change, and this is just for 
precautionary for because of our theft. Um, Public Works, Wellhouse, and Booster um, locks any if we don't change any other locks. Okay. Um, Josh had asked me to get bids from a couple different places. Yeah, I think we need to do it. Get bids, and then we'll figure out which locks are going to be the top priorities. Right. Some of them. It doesn't make any difference. Doesn't make any difference. Okay. But I guess the rest of the stuff is just going to have to be handled as it comes to the surface. I, mean, I think the main thing right now, as far as I'm concerned, is <coughs> whatever it's going to take to get some help in there and get get these finances. And that's to me right now that's the number one priority is to know where we're at financially. I agree. Yeah, the uh, finances certainly are one of our top priorities on the committee, partly because some of these other items, uh, we don't exactly know how much money is available to spend on them. Uh, so that's you know, what, you're, what you're talking about. Can we rekey everything or should we rekey nothing because we don't have the money for it? We know roughly that the cash position is positive during the year. We've spent less than we've taken in. But where that is compared to budget, we have yeah. No clue yet until last year's budget is finalized. No, last year's accounts are finalized, but we have starting numbers for this year's budget to roll through. So certainly uh, getting that up to speed, and I know staff's been working on that as fast as they can with the time available in between answering public records requests and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, so that definitely has to be one of our top priorities is getting the finances current and stable so that we can trust the reports from month to month. So one of the things that the committee talked a lot about is what happened, you know, we made sure that we had a full understanding about what happened during this period between election day and certification. Um, Leanne talked a little bit about that. Um, um, one of the things that we decided that we thought was, was an important thing to do um, was remind um, both the staff, um, department heads, um, representative staff, everybody, as well as the mayor of their continuing obligation to the city um, throughout this period. Um, um, during our meeting Wednesday, um, uh, Deanne, I forget what the yeah, Gregory. Gregory from Pacifica um, has provided me with um, some suggested language to do that. Um, I've introduced that and made some changes, and there will be an email that goes out tonight um, to, to the mayor um, with a letter to him, um, and then a separate one to all city staff and department heads um, that, um, that city staff can expect to have in their inboxes in the morning. Um, you know, no, uh, it just simple hopefully friendly but, but clear reminders about <coughs> um, continuing obligations to the city during this transition. Um, the other thing that we talked a lot about and, and did a lot of research um, about is, as Leanne talked about a little bit, how that transition actually works. Um, there's been a couple of different reports, some of them kind of true, some of them not, um, about how that works as best as we understand it. And we've um, sought the counsel of, of a couple of different attorneys, most of them free. Um, about how that works is when the certification happens, and if it happens that Mayor's son resigns his office um, or just simply doesn't show up to conduct his duties as mayor, um, that's when the authority is granted to me as mayor for attempt to act in the mayor's stead. Um, there have been questions about what authority I, the mayor pro tem might have in that. Um, we've got confirmation, legal opinions from two different attorneys, and we're waiting for confirmation from the third. Um, that the mayor for has full authority to act as mayor in every capacity um, when doing that. Um, and so that's, I think, good to know that there will be, at least for a short period of time, somebody um, um, with full authority at the stern here. Um, um, my focus during that time, as short as I can make that time to be, um, is going to be assessment, um, find out where we are as a city. Um, particularly, uh, council members have asked a lot of questions and simply generated more questions than we have answers, um, and also create options for um, the new mayor when he or she comes into office. Um, for 
particularly on the option side, particularly on the staffing. Um, I'm going to be looking to find out from each department um, what the status of their staffing levels are, where the vacancies are, um, and, and post for as many of those jobs as we can so that when the new mayor comes in, he or she has the ability to start picking through resumes and finding qualified people to fill those positions. Um, certainly in knowing where our risks are as a city and what the status of those risks are. It's been a big question for us, as, um, particularly as council. Um, what complaints do we have? Um, what's the status of those and how are we dealing with them? <coughs> um, that, if you look at Leanne's list about what kind of outside assistance we're hoping to get, um, the management, the legal, and the HR, that's going to be pretty key for the uh, management and HR for the vacancies as well. Um, also, we talked a little bit about already the finances. Um, we're way behind in finances, um, and frankly, we're, we're behind on staffing in the finance department. Um, and so um, we're hoping that some of that outside assistance can help us get caught up there. Um, also in the city clerk's office. Um, that's been a pretty vacant office for the last 18 months, um, or at least most of those 18 months. Um, and so it's going to be a big priority to get some bodies, some educated bodies, in updating um, and, and getting minutes for council meetings. Um, we've gone without, without a city clerk for quite a while, um, particularly since council meetings. Um, updating ordinances and resolutions to specific municipal codes, um, also public records requests. Um, I, I heard Betty say last week that she's spending a considerable amount of time there, um, and, and that's not good when, when we're also way behind on our finances. Um, and so one of the things that, um, that I'd like to get <coughs> feedback from the rest of council on um, is particularly in the city clerk position and um, in any vacant finance, finance positions that we have um, is a while, I mean, what am I trying to say? Um, the mayor, whether it's the mayor, mayor, or the mayor part-time acting as mayor, doesn't have the authority to, to enter into contracts without council approval. Um, and I'd like to get to work as soon as we can about that. And so I'd like to get some council feedback about the possibility of me appointing um, a person or persons to fill any of those vacancies on a temporary basis um, so that we can start the work getting done and then still post for those positions and if the appointee wants to apply for those for the long term great but they would still have to stand for that under the new mayor um, you know it's a, it's a vicious chicken and egg circle as you think about <coughs> you know I've struggled do we want are those important enough duties that that we want somebody in-house right here, a staff person that spends all their time doing that, or should we contract for that? Because it, it, we're talking about a, a fairly temporary nature, at least the immediate need, but we couldn't do a contract unless we'd approved it through council, and if we're going to approve it through council, it, instead of approving a contract, why don't we appoint a new mayor and do that? Um, and so uh, I'm looking for hopefully a little bit of feedback about what the comfort level is. We've got provisions in our our um, rules and procedures that allow for appointment without confirmation from council for certain positions based on, I don't know if it's emergency or emergency or what that term is, but um, I, I'm hoping for feedback. Uh, council has the authority to contract for professional, ser professional services on an interim basis. And uh, as such, we could delegate the mayor pro tem or the president of council or anybody to receive this contract. Mm -hmm. I think that would be the way to go that way. We could post and uh, advertise for the position, interview, and uh, hire permanent personnel and use professional services. I'd actually be comfortable at our next meeting if we were to uh, have a fairly broad delegation of authority to contract, making it clear that the short-term contract period of, say, 30 days with renewal subject to council approval uh, for any services needed to bring the city current in its uh, operations or finances. I think that would have <coughs> very broad but clearly temporary authority while figuring out where we are so that we know what to do going forward on a permanent basis. Mm -hmm. 